Data integrity. So let's first define our agenda. We will start with what is a hash function. You will see it's something really important for the integrity check. Then we'll discuss about integrity and security. And in the last part, we define what is a message authentication and we'll see how it's addressed with symmetric cryptography and asymmetric cryptography. So let's start with hash function. What is the purpose of a hash function? A hash function should generate a fixed size value based on an unknown size input data. So imagine you've got a huge file of gigabyte of data. It's an input for your hash function and the output of this should be a fixed size digest value. This function have some ideal properties. What are they? First, any modification in the input should change the digest value. That means if you've got one bit that have been modified in the input file, you should have a new digest. The other one is if you just have the digest, you can't find any idea of what is the input of this function. And the last one, two different inputs should generate different digest value. So I say that it was ideal because in reality, all algorithms could have some weakness. And it's why some algorithms are considered as broken and some other not, not, or not yet, I would say, unfortunately. Let's come back to web and Alice. So Alice writes this letter. She will use our hash function and we generate a digest. She will send this digest to Bob and she will also send his letter to Bob. So Bob could ensure the text has not been modified because he will hash it again. And he should find exactly the same digest that have been computed by Alice. If it's okay, that means the text has not been modified. Quite simple. From the security point of view, we will discuss this after. Now the main algorithm about hash. You've got the MD5, so message digest 5. You've got the output size and the status is broken. As I say, it's, there is an ideal properties for, the, for all those algorithms and sometimes, unfortunately, some hackers manage to find some weakness. You've got the SHA1 with an output size of 160 bits, that is broken also. SHA2 is considered as uh, secured, sorry, started from the output size of 256 bits. And you've got SHA3 with different output size also. Here, this one is OK. Now I propose we continue with shots on zone just to fix ID. Really basic one, just compute some hash. So here's some hands-on with digest. Quite trivial, but OK. I think it's important to, to, to go through all the, those things. So always my same example, but I will also provide you another one where I just modify one bit. Oh, this one. You can look here, you've got a C <laughs> regarding B before. So everything is the same exactly except one bit. So let's compute some digest. Um, it's quite trivial, but okay. So open SSL, digest, and then you say which digest you want to use. So for example, MD5, uh, even if it's deprecated, it could be used for other topics. So with example.bin, you've got I would say this output, which is a digest. And if I do exactly the same with a one bit modifier, the value is completely different. So I would say you can replace the MD5 by all other value of the different algorithm possible. And that is available in this version of OpenSSL. You can use SHA1 if you want. You can use SHA256. or 512. Okay, and if I do it with the version that is one bit modifier, the value is quite different. So, quite trivial, but it's possible to experiment this with OpenSSL. And sometimes it could be useful when you receive something on the net, sometimes you can find the MD file just to check that you have properly download and you can use OpenSSL to check this. Integrity and security. We have seen together how to use a hash value to generate, I will say, some digest. But from the security point of view, mm, it's not very useful. Why? Imagine Eve. She gets the message from Alice. She modifies it. 
she can recompute the digest and she will send these letters and this new digest to Bob. So I would say it's not useful from a security point of view. You can be sure. It's some, something, it's just something you can use for, I would say, some integrity check, but without any insurance that nobody regenerates the digest. So a solution would be to do a combination with encryption. This is the message authentication. Message authentication is a combination of hash function and some symmetric cryptography and asymmetric cryptography. For the symmetric cryptography, we will see HashMac, Average DCM, and for the asymmetric one, Signature RSA and SCC. The purpose ensures that an attacker can alter the data and the digests without being detected. In fact, we don't want him to manage to modify the data. With the symmetric cryptography, so first let's start with HashMac. Symmetric, that means you already have a common secret between Bob and Alice, our golden key. This time Alice will write his letter and we just send these letters as it is. It was not encrypted in this case because it's not shy at all. So she will combine these letters with the key. Frankly speaking, it's not really an encryption. It's just a concatenation of those information. And she will put this as input of the hash function. So she will get a digest. She will send this digest to Bob. And Bob will do the same algorithm. He will concatenate the same way the key with the file, put it as input of the hash, and compare the digest value. If we imagine here, she can cut the text, but she don't have this common secret. So she can't regenerate exactly the same digest, or she will generate something that is not correct. So Bob will detect that it's not the same digest. So that's it, quite simple. Another algorithm is iOS GCM, Galois counter mode. You remember when we see together the different algorithm in symmetric encryption? I already told you this RS GCM, but I don't want to address it before. Why? In fact, if we can encrypt with a counter mode, it will also use a specific hash function, which rely on the Galois field multiplication to ensure uh, the integrity of the message. So it's why I don't address it before. So it will encrypt some data to ensure confidentiality and it will also generate a tag which allows to ensure the message authentication. Let's see some details. What are the inputs? Here we've got some data to send. And in fact, we've got data we want to encrypt, but we also have some information we don't need to encrypt, a headers or in sequencer. We also have a key, I would say a symmetric key. So the input of this algorithm will be this additional data that will be taken into account to generate the hash or the tag value, a sequencer, which will be the initialization vectors of our counter mode. And we've got the plain text. This one should be encrypted. And the result of this algorithm would be some encrypted data who corresponded to the plain text. We've got a tag, who I would say will be unique if you modify anything in the data in the headers, the tag should change. And you've got the headers and the sequencer, which has not been encrypted, so it needs to be transmitted, I would say, with all the information, because without the headers, you can generate the tag, or the good tag. That is for the input and the help. Let's see the algorithm. Please don't be afraid by this. If you just look at this part, initialization vectors, counters, increment of the counters, encryption of the plain text, or encryption of the counter, sorry. So with the plain text and the cipher text, this part, is really the counter mode as we have seen before, classical one. What is new? Well, this part, all the multiplication hash we've got this and the XO we've got. As you can see, the authentication data would be the headers for sure. There is a hash function and we saw the result of this hash function with a cipher text. And we will hash the result again. And we'll hash the result again. So it's not a classical hash, it's a Galois one, but yes, we just consider it as a a function that could generate a new digest. And even the length of the data would be taken into account. And finally, you got an authentication tag. So to sum up, you just encrypt it in a counter mode, and in the same time, you generate a tag who could ensure the integrity. Okay, any modification in the input of the plain text should generate a new tag. Any modification in the IV, the length of the headers or the headers, should generate a, a, a new tag, okay? So it's really to ensure uh, integrity of the both. The problem of this, 
or not a problem, or I would say the drawback, when you want to check the tag, you need to encrypt or to decrypt. If we check the agenda, we have seen together the hash function. You remember huge input data and finally a fixed size digest with some hydral properties you always keep in mind. One modification of the input will modify the digest. With the digest, I can find any information on the input and two different inputs should generate two different digests. Integrity and security. Hash function alone, not so useful. So we have to define message authentication, a combination of a hash and some symmetric encryption, and we have seen together HMAC and OSGCM algorithm. Now let's do it with asymmetric. It will be the signatures with RSA and SEC. So with asymmetric cryptography, we are talking about signatures. Signatures is encryption of a digest thanks to asymmetric cryptography. So here I chose a word of encryption, but you remember, ECC don't do encryption directly. So for ECC, it's a specific algorithm. I don't go into details, but let's keep the term encryption like for ERISA because it just simplifies the understanding. So again, we've got Bob and Alice. Each one got key pairs. So the public part are green, the private part are red, okay? So Alice will write the letters. She will send it to Bob in clear because she doesn't matter about confidentiality. She's not shy. Then she will do the hash of his letters. She will get a digest. And the digest will be encrypted thanks asymmetric cryptography. The question now is, which case should I use? You remember for the confidentiality, when we want to encrypt some data, we use the public key of the recipient. Do you think here it's a good idea? Let's check together. So I propose that Alice will try all the keys possible. First one, she can use a public key. So if you encrypt something with a public key, you can only decrypt it with the private key associated. So only Alice could decrypt the signatures. No sense. But public key, like the encryption for confidentiality. So quite good. I generate my hash. I encrypt it with the Bob public key. So only Bob can decrypt it. Oh, uh, yes, but the purpose if could have access to the public key so she can compute a new digest. She can encrypt it with the Bob key, Bob decrypt, and think the message is good. So it's not the good, the good way to do it now. The last thing is Alice could use her private key. So everybody could decrypt the signatures. Mm, that's good. I mean, what is important is that you manage to check the signatures but don't generate a new signatures. So in this case, if can't generate a new signatures, she can decrypt the digest so she can just check the integrity of the message. But it's not confidential. Alice don't care about somebody have access to the content. But what is sure that if can generate a new signatures. So if we come back where we were, we encrypt the digest with the private key of Alice. So it's Alice that generates the signature of her message. Then she, she, she sends this message encrypted to Bob. So Bob will check this integrity thanks. Hash function of the data, he will get a digest. Take the digest, will decrypt it with the Alice public key because the digest has been encrypted with the private Alice key. And then he will get the digest, compare them. Okay, integrity is good. So here you've got all the mechanism of the signatures. So always remember it was the private key that you will generate a signatures. And a signatures could be checked with a public key. That means anybody can check a signatures. Check a signature, just check the integrity. So everybody can check this. But generate a signature should be done by one people, so with a private key. So I really insist on this. Only the owner of a key pair, that means the one who've got the private key, can generate the signatures. And everybody can check a signature thanks to the public key of the key pair, key pair owner. Let's do a short hands on about this. So now I propose that we do hands on with the signatures and first with the RSA. So first we will generate uh, a file with some data inside. So for example, I can put a okay, and I put all these things in a file. Okay, so if I check my file, I've got some data inside. So 
we already generate a key pairs, a result key pairs, so no need to do it again. Uh, let's use it. Open SSL. We will need to do a digest. Okay. Remember in ERISA we do a digest and then we encrypt it. So we can say which algorithm we want to use. So it will be the SHA-256 in our case. And we want to sign it. We will sign it with my private key. Okay. Um, the output will be or the output file name, sorry, signatures dot bin for example and the input was my file so I do this okay now I get the signatures I can do an exemp of it okay I've got a huge numbers so now let's check the signatures so open SSL again we says okay I want to do the digest with a SHA 256 we want this time not to sign, we want to verify the signatures. So we say we want to verify, and we will verify with my public key this time. Okay? We say where is the signatures to check. And we also give, we want to check the signature of my file. And tell it to you. Okay, verification is okay. So Imagine we just take another file, or if I modify just my file, and say, okay, this time I want to be a C, N, D, G, J, and what's so on, what's so on, and I put it in my file too. .txt. If I try to check the signatures with my file too, of course. It will say that verification is failures. And if I modify just one character in the first file, it will be the same. So, quite simple. Here you've got the example with ERISA. We can also generate signatures thanks elliptic curves. Okay, so it's the first time that we will use elliptic curves with OpenSSL, so we will need to generate the key pairs, and then we will sign and verify a file with it. So first, let's check what are the curves that are available in this version of OpenSSL. So OpenSSL, SCPRAM, list curve. As you can see, there is many of them. Okay. Um, so. It's really a warning with uh, elliptic curves. When you want to do something, some curves are more elliptic than others. So you have to select very carefully the ones that you will use. Here I will select the SECP384 Air 1. For the next one, recommended for signatures. So let's use it. Um, I will show you a command that will give you some details about this. So quite long, but you will see something that uh, made the link with, with the theory we within together. So open SSL, a C param, mm, param encrypt, explicit, conv form, compressed. So here, many parameters, the ID is just to show you what is exactly behind the curves that we have selected. No. Out. Seed. Tire name. And I want to use the sec P384 L1. So I hope you made the link with the theory we have seen together about elliptic curves. Remember our equation, the coefficient a, b, the prime numbers, the order, and the starting point with these generators. So here we've got the file or the curves that we will use now. So let's generate our CC key now.
so I want to generate based on the curves secp384 r1 and the gen key the output name would be my cc key dot pen okay mm. so let's extract from this key because now we are i will say more familiar with the pen format here we've got the private part on the public part so let's open the cell uh, elliptic curve to in my SSC pen key um, let's check if you can show me that way oh sorry I mistyped open SSL so here we've got the private and the public okay away the same thing so now let's extract I will say the public part of this key so let's put the pub, pub out and the out will be my okay so we've got now the public part of the key the private part of the key so we will use uh, the same input file that for RSA and let's generate the synergies so I would say it's nearly the same that before open SSL we say which digest we want to use SHA-256 we will sign it with my SSC key so I will sign with the private key okay the input file will be my file dot txt and the output will be the signatures dot bin So now I can check the signature with OpenSSL digest SHA-256 we verify the signatures when we want to verify a signature we need just a public key and the signatures is a signature dot bin oh was dot nin here. Sorry for the mistyping, but it should work. And the input is my file dot txt. And verification is okay. If I put my file to dot txt, it wasn't works. Okay. So here we have used uh, elliptic curves, exactly the same manner that the RSA. Let's do a short sum up of the integrity. So we need to have message authentication mechanism to have a strong integrity check. For this, we can combine with symmetric cryptography, HMAC GCM, and for the asymmetric cryptography, it's signature mechanism with RSA on elliptic curves. RSA signature results from a digest encryption. For the SCC, so the elliptic curve signatures, it results from an algorithm, a specific one, which name is elliptic curve digital signatures algorithm. I don't go into details for this, you've got a lot of literature about it. And the signature generation is done thanks private key. Signature check will be done with a public key. So if you've got this in mind, you can address integrity. So where are we now? Where do we stand? We have tool to encrypt message, so symmetric, asymmetrics. You know how to combine them now. We have seen together how to check the message integrity or message authentication to be exact. The HMAC have its GCM signature process. The last point, authentication. How Bob could be sure that it was talking to Alice and not to somebody else? That's important. So let's see this last part.